everybody. Today we're going to talk about the different visa types that you can apply for if you're an offshore applicant looking to come to work and live in Australia. So this is specifically for people who are living outside of Australia at the moment. me. My name is Tracy Chen and I'm the principal lawyer at Mason Chen Law Group. Anyways, before I jump into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with people who need it. I know that a lot of people here in Australia or overseas may have family members that are looking to migrate to Australia. So just remember the visas I'm going to talk about today are specifically for people who want to come and basically live and work in Australia. So the one that has really surprised me and we've seen a lot of invitations for but only recently in the last few months is New South Wales. So if you go onto the New South Wales website you can see what the requirements are to be invited for a 491 or a 190 visa as an offshore candidate. You may need to have you know a lot of work experience and you know high points and whatnot but at the end of the day it is achievable and people are actually getting invited which again I'm very surprised about so that's definitely one that you can look into for that one you just need to submit an expression of interest and then once you submit that expression of interest if they pick you you'll get an email to apply for the nomination and then you need to submit the documents to support your application obviously and then they will finalize that and you'll get a formal invitation to apply for your visa it may be the 491 or the 190 depending on you know what you selected the the other state that has been inviting offshore is South Australia. Again, it's dependent on the occupation. If you jump on the occupation list for IMI SA, which is what they call it, you can see which occupations they are inviting offshore candidates for. They have very specific requirements for it. So for example, if you look at marketing specialists in South Australia, you scroll right to the bottom, you can see that they are actually inviting offshore applicants. However, they must have at least eight years work experience. They are only inviting them for the 491 visa and you must have at least 65 points. Oh, and it looks like you also need to have proficient English. So basically those are all the requirements. So when you submit your expression of interest and you fill in all the details, depending on what you have, you will see the points will come out. You'll see that how many points you actually have. But again, I think it is competitive. So you always need to aim higher. If you've got six in each band, but you believe that you can get eight in each band for English, go for it because that is what's going to help your application. Now, how long are these applications actually taking? Now, first of all, there is two concepts to this. The first is your expression of interest and actually even being invited. And a lot of people ask me this question, how long will it take to be invited? It's not a matter of that. It's just literally like what the demand is at the time and whether you have the right occupation. You can get an invite in like two weeks. I had an applicant apply from offshore. I think it was as a psychologist, lodged the expression of interest for New South Wales and after four days she received an invitation to apply for the nomination and then she submitted the nomination and then literally one week after she got her invitation to apply for the visa then she actually lodged the visa application with the department and this varies as well I do think that they are prioritizing onshore applicants maybe if you have an occupation in the critical sector they may process your application faster as well and I know this is so random everyone's like you know what is a critical occupation and and there is actually an occupation list which is they're called the priority skilled migration occupation list and if you read it clearly it says it's directly for employers sponsored visas okay and so if you're applying for one of the visas that I spoke about before you know the 482 the 186 if you have an occupation on that PIMSOL list they call it your visa can be granted pretty quickly now I don't think the same list applies for general skilled migration but it's a good guideline so you know your healthcare occupations your doctors your nurses you'd be getting a pretty quick grant at this point like at the moment in Australia there is a huge demand for skilled migrants uh, businesses are struggling you know and they're absolutely voicing their concerns that they can't find the right people to work in their business so I do think we're going to see a lot more activity in the skilled migration space and the employer sponsored visa space as you can see if you look at the migration numbers for employer sponsorship it's up there's more spots available for it which means the government recognizes that there is a demand for it and you know you know they've opened up more spots for it essentially and it's great we're really excited for the new 
financial year. All the states will be updating their requirements in the new financial year for general skilled migration, so not employer sponsorship. And so that's really exciting. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on the new changes. So don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.